Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from Man at YouTube and the other week I attended the Australian Open Model Expo 2012 at Sandan Racecourse Melbourne Australia. It was hosted between the 9th and 11th of June. Like last year there was a fantastic model display and competition including many clubs showcasing their work, stall selling everything by the book we'll cover later, all organised by a number of clubs and the local IPMS chapter. The event was a lot of fun and amazing as always, catching up with your modelling friends and plenty to talk to with peers and random folk alike. I honestly had a lot of fun. This video will be presented where I'll show each major category or style of modelling mixed together from competition and club displays within this video as a review of Model Expo and a second video detailing about my personal entries, the club achievements and the mecha category just in case you're not interested in the middle, military, civil and other style of modelling and only the Gundam stuff you're able to skip this one. If not, please keep watching. During Expo I somehow found the time to go around and take footage and photos of the kits that caught my eye and I like for any aesthetic, personal or subject value. Funnily enough, I almost end up taking photos of half the models across the entire board of the event. Unfortunately with Model Expo this year, I've noticed, but I haven't seen the numbers yet, that there's been a decline in entries and display. Most likely you can just rub it off to um, the uh, bad years and times people having financially and with work, more time spent in the office and with family than in the hobby. Nonetheless, I was really happy to see a lot of new models out there and nothing rehashed from other competitions of the past. In a way of spectators and people crowding around the hall, there seemed to be a lot of people rocking up to look and pervert the kits. Another thing I've also noticed that the uh, quality in workmanship across the board has been extremely high. All the models were masterfully finished and built. There was uh, very, very few amateurish or beginner builds. Uh, this is the uh, second concern I have as I'm afraid there's not a lot of young or new blood coming through in the easier categories, especially when the open, enhanced and out of the box categories are slowly mashing up into one. But uh, this isn't too much of the case or a bother at the moment, and I'd like to more focus on the positives. Right now we're looking at the aircraft section, and the reason why I put this first is that aircraft modelling seems to be the most popular subject at this uh, competition and in Australia, though I could see why, as Besides the uh, shape and subject matter, there's a lot of really interesting and fascinating camouflage and methods of um, painting these kits, including the art of big decals. I love watching some of the three-hand uh, soft and hard camouflage patterns, uh, sinking in with the decals, the uh, pre-post shade marks, the panel lines all of that very gently coming together with a fine amount of uh, detail through photo etch or existing kit stock parts. I absolutely passionately love the colour schemes and the different colours some of these kits come even though they're um, accurately compared to what was out there in the uh, real world or history uh, all of what I've been just talking about I'd love to hands in and try to bring it in my modeling in the mecha category. I 
really, really get inspired by um, aircraft builds every year, every time. Even though most people draw more inspiration from armor and tank for their uh, robot kits, I just really, really, really love the aircraft. It's something I definitely hope to draw on in the future. It was also really good to see this year that there was a dispersion of subject matters and kits based from different countries and different fo times. Not all focused on, let's say, World War II Germany. I was had my eyes open to the many different type of models out there and every time you just see something you just never notice from box arts or stacks of kits in a model shop. I'll definitely like to have a hand at another aircraft sometime in the future. In the way of the uh, competition and uh, subject matters displayed in this video, just absolutely wow. The clever thought put in the execution and display of these kits and the level of workmanship on these kits are absolutely fantastic. Funnily enough, after reading many hobby magazines and looking on some blogs and constantly keeping eye on the YouTube, with constant practice, a lot of these aircraft kits and very complicated colour scheme, once you're tooled up with everything like your airbrush and the skill of handling big decals, it isn't too complicated. The only models that do look ridiculously difficult are the uh, weathered aircraft which is a lot more of a delicate art. This is something I'll definitely practice or go in the direction of but no matter how awe inspiring or intimidating these kits definitely do look um, I wouldn't discount anyone saying they don't have the ability to finish something of that standard especially the soft edge camouflage I believe the uh, luster from these finished models, why I'm thinking they're absolutely amazing, why people are really drawn into them, is the uh, study and the research of the colour and the execution of the schemes and camouflage. And this all comes down to research. I would like to research in this direction. I will definitely have to refer back to these photos. I don't know why I didn't do the same thing last year but aircraft I'm always drawn back to aircraft in the way that they're colored looking at an unpainted aircraft kit it's a lot of large surfaces with uh, a little bit of detail plenty of flat plastic and most of the time you paint these in one piece unless you don't want to hand paint the landing gear or whatever or masking or whatnot but it's definitely doable. If they can do it on one piece, I can do it on my multi-piece kits. Now, just before we leave the aircraft category, I'd like to bring attention to this uh, particular kit, which is my choice of aircraft of the competition. This uh, Second World War English bomber is just to die for. The uh, hangar and extra detail being pulled apart here and there is absolutely amazing. Uh, so much work and modification on a single kit, well done. The tanks and armoured fighting vehicle categories may not be as vibrant and interesting in colour scheme as the aircrafts, has their own particular charm that this competition displayed very, very well. As the kits are stand alone, the possibility of equipping them with figures, equipment, extra detail, and then building a world around them with the diorama has also been very well depicted in this competition. Some really creative and big ideas out there, people willing to give a go at diorama building even though some may not exactly be on the mark. I enjoyed looking at all of them. It's also very refreshing to see some fairly unusual subjects out there, such like a uh, Russian 
sled snowmobile or items with large crane or specialist equipment for very specialist jobs like towing another vehicle. I'm not too sure if there was scratch building involved or they were stock kits but very good to see some very interesting uh, ideas and particular customs. Also the number of dioramas, particularly really big mammoth designs that people would only construct one or two in their lifetime is imagining the space they would consume in your household is mind-blowing but studying these particular dioramas and watching people crowd around them for a while asking questions of the modeler is good to see that some people really do get into this hobby head first and how deep they enjoy and love it. On the other hand the very small 72nd and lower armor with the amount of detail and fine weathering hand painted and carefully dry brushed and whatnot was also equally quite good. I do regret not taking as many photos of the smaller kits. But overall, across the board, what really got my blood pumping in enjoying these particular kits, besides the absolute em enormous creativity behind the dioramas and storytelling, is the realistic finish of some of these tanks. The weathering, the extra mud or putty applied on the tank tracks, the small details such as small containers and wrapped bags and luggage and whatnot strapped to them. I believe I witnessed uh, one modern tank or armoured vehicle had a very small delicately modelled slab of Coca-Cola put on the side of the truck or something which was just really cool to see. It's little things like that that really catch your attention and want you to study and learn more about these particular model and the story it's telling that you'll want to look at this one over the other ones for a longer period of time. But at a very close inspection across a lot of these kits Again, that I was saying with the aircraft, none of this is that difficult to replicate. If anything, the tanks are almost just as easy being in small, a few smaller pieces. But a lot of the work, if you were to attempt to figures, is a completely different art style. Not to say that that is also hard, it's something to study and learn and acquire a new skill, which can also be quite the adventure and fun. But, as you always say, you don't want to add an element like that to your diorama or project. There's no need why you have to. What I will recommend in trying to acquire the different skills in producing and finishing things like this is the hobby magazines are normally absolutely perfect for armoured vehicles and dioramas since is where they mostly focus their publications on. This is where you'll learn that how they do the builds, the base painting and the painstakingly amount of effort in the finish which a few products can definitely get the trick done and make them look quite sweet. Overall, a very, very fun subject matter to look into. For those who enjoy being a slave to hand painting and your oils or acrylic paints, there was a nice selection of very detailed, masterfully painted figures in large scale and busts, as well as a selection of wargaming figures. The beautiful part of marketing figures is how low maintenance and little tools you need to get started in them. Though the techniques that come along to mastery of this 
a level it does take a few years to pick up but always quicker when you do your homework and practice extensively I could tell you these guys didn't get the level that they are now overnight though we have to love it how realistic they just come out and the story they tell through the action of the body and the correct skin tone and clothing colour of their uniforms. Not everybody is interested in collecting machines of war or appreciate them, but everybody does love looking at figures of history, entertainment characters or anything that's relevant to today. Unfortunately at Model Expo there wasn't a very large showcase of figures and I'd love to see more people get into that aspect of the hobby and really go out. Hopefully sometime in the future if the wargaming and figure boom does occur again that we will see more as I do absolutely enjoy them. To tell the truth personally and I know I've been saying this for a while but I definitely want to do this in the foreseeable future as in this year I would like to attempt one of those larger anime resin figures, particularly the half-naked girly ones. Definitely I would like to showcase something like that off at the next year's Model Expo, as you do sometimes see them from time to time, but unfortunately this year was completely absent of it. On the other hand, and for a weird reason, the retail section was absolutely full of the figures, particularly two shops with just rows and rows of resin and die car stuff. At every modelling scene and competition, you'll always have your ships, but always in small numbers as these guys are a special breed. Looking at this uh, new Tamir Yamato Japanese World War II ship, the immense amount of detail and the amount of work and rigging and whatnot is insane. The patience level of this element of the modelling is on a completely different footing and the people who are attracted to these sort of things normally model it. I will say to do ship modeling right is an extremely difficult hobby but admiring the workmanship is amazing. Don't be surprised if some of these gentlemen spend two to three years on a single project. Normally to the reason why we tolerate them bringing the same kit two to three times in a row we are also met with traditional sailing ships made of wood rigging and whatnot. May not be a plastic kit, but I'm really grateful that they are invited and able to display their work here as their work is just absolutely fantastic. Talking to one gentleman in previous years, they have to read entire books and do months and months of research on the thickness of string they buy just to do the right rigging. Really, really special stuff here. Then you have the smaller styrene kits and other projects like boats, submarines and battle cruisers. Not as involved as these larger projects but still very small, very fine pieces of work. These are also fairly expensive and time consuming. Patience is required. I still love to look at them. One day, who knows. For now I'm just going to attempt to slap together a small dystopian war fleet just to get me started. I would like to point out one display I believe was built by a gentleman I've met at a few competitions. He tried to build the entire um, battle fleet for uh, on the Japanese side of uh, the Battle of Midway. This required a ton of research and it just looked really really cool when a lot of ships in the same scale do come together. Nice personal collection. Civil vehicles. Not exactly my cup of tea, 
except for this uh, Vespa workshop diorama. This uh, gentleman modelled off his own grandfather's workshop, which is really, really cool and lovely. It is fun to admire in the clean manner that they've been built and painted, but there's quite a bit of controversy between the die-cast versus the styrene models and where the modeler starts and the manufacturer finish. I'm not going to enter in that debate or argument as I have very little knowledge nor am interested. What I do absolutely admire is the sheer realism of some of these really nicely painted jobs. The amount of polishing and attention to finish and gloss and whatnot. Some of these uh, vehicles actually look like they're made of glass, metal and components. Also, don't get me started on how the hell they do the interior detail and engines and whatnot. I've seen aftermarket components like coloured cabling and carpeted flock, but there's a lot of there's got to be some sort of uh, build paint, build paint, build paint component to this. But in the end, like the other categories, I also have a very unique respect for the automotive modelers who particularly do the clean job as I don't have a very strong understanding on how they get around to though wish to get more of an insight I'd have liked to have seen more uh, rat rods and rusted out heap di style dioramas that are very similar to Dr. Cranky's homepage Equally in the competition and displays, there were a few motorcycles and trucks though unfortunately very small in number and not getting a good grasp of the range. Speaking to one modeler there who is experienced in motorcycles, the sheer decal work on the instrument panel and the markings for the uh, races of all the sponsors is really painstakingly hard to do. Before we wrap up here, I'd like you guys to have a quick look at this immensely awesome diorama of a collection of die-cast cars. This is a gentleman's personal collection who scratch-built the uh, scenery and just worked on these cars and placed them all over the place. He had to register a whole table as an individual club. In between the miscellaneous subjects that are not covered in above, you have all those extra kits that don't quite meet the major categories, such as science fiction, wargaming, scratch builds, and other bits and pieces that are seen as either extremely weird and you're not sure if it's a kit bash toy, model kit, or something made in the guy's garage. Nonetheless, all wonderful and great fun to look at. You know these particular models, modelers, and looking at myself, do like to show off a bit and doing something unusual and getting people's attentions with that. But again, without those individuals, this hobby wouldn't be as fun as it is. Analyzing some of the more usual and able to buy as a plastic kit miscellaneous stuff, we first look at the science fiction, the Star Wars and Western movies. All stunningly well built. The kits are still able to be bought today. A lot of fun. The Warhammer and Wargaming minis are well painted. The larger machines do look pretty cool. Hasegawa eggplanes, uh, monster movie vinyl kits and resin and whatnot. Those are, I love them up to bits, very, very unusual subjects, yet very, very well painted and finished. You, you definitely know that the individual can have a laugh and just have something absolutely special on their shelf besides the legion of tanks and aircrafts and everything else that's almost carbon copy to each other. Though, in the end, it's all the personal choice of the subject. Sadly, and this includes the mecha category and other kits I've entered, 
the model expo people aren't too sure what to do with some of these subjects and models and they have a tendency of shunting them around the competition and not exactly getting the limelight I think they should deserve nor judged in a the way that does seem meaning to the finish of the kit they necessarily can't be judged against reference material and realism of the real world since there's no such thing. With a very similar layout to last year being all the tables in the centre of the room dedicated to club displays and the competition all of the outer tables right around including a small foyer for portraits and landscape paintings of box art was all retail space of shops interstates local and suppliers selling tools and stuff direct you had absolutely everything under the sun this time round that you'd need to finish or start a project with most of the content being focused on military subjects for model kits which is expected a lot of the content for sale was focused at supplies tools and references which is what people a lot most likely will freely spend their money on without feeling guilty of bringing tons of box kits back you had one woman selling specialty dental and hobby tools and another gentleman with mini power tools which were very helpful there were resin casters two of them a few airbrush guys including one that gave free demonstrations a person that specialized in cars across the board figures of different casting and whatnot uh, Gundam kits were well represented as well on the Monday we had the swap and sell which was in a separate room and generally looked exactly the same to last year but it's a bit smaller a bit of a disappointment, a lot of the stuff same old, a lot of the people who were personal collectors clearing out what they have were fairly overpriced and a lot of common subjects excluding some of the older rarer ones. I did pick up one or two good things from the swap and sell and the traders haul a lot of bargains. Of course, being with show specials and people travelling and whatnot don't forget to try to haggle for a better price now for the model expo haul as a good about 150 bucks worth of stuff not much in the way of uh, model kits as I have enough but plenty in the way of tools now I've got this uh, airfix male or female tank could be the mother not sure HO scale very rare blister pack these are the sort of kits that they would have sold in newsagents, Woolworths, whatnot. A uh, very rare piece of history. The Mitsubishi K146 uh, Japanese reconnaissance plane. The Ravel F15. Just a $2 piece of Mechamasume fodder. Some Imperial Guard Battlefleet Gothic ships. Uh, bloody rare, good price, I've always wanted to build one of those. Uh, textured styrene, these are roof tiles, I think they'll be amazing armor um, pieces on uh, Mecca. Uh, two pieces of uh, checker plate styrene, that's pretty cool. Standard Sparmax style .3 airbrush. The other one had its air solenoid broke and getting this half its uh, retail price it's cheaper than getting bloody parts. Uh, very very cool diamond bit Dremel pieces about the same price as standard Dremel pieces at the hardware store including some cutting blades. Uh, Dremel bits from a two dollar bargain bin and I was thrown in a extra stainless steel tool that's used for dental work as a gift. Paint trays. A ton of uh, styrene for 10 bucks. There's like 20 sheets of uh, very thin stuff. Great for uh, plating. It's pretty sweet looking decals. Not sure what I'm going to use these for. 
Uh, there's a new line of uh, Alclad 2 paints. This is armored glass. I'm guessing it's uh, transparent or whatnot. It's really trippy blue green. Uh, some MIG pigments. It's a dark grey charcoal color. But the uh, absolute gem that I found in the swap cell is the Wave 124 scale Tachikoma. Believe it or not, only for fifty dollars. Uh, a holy grail item for many many people's collections, and yeah, something I've always wanted. So, not a bad haul at all. In conclusion with the event, the organisation and how welcomed I felt as a modeler and a club member from the committee and staff was very, very pleasing. I had a great time. My friends had an absolute great time. Uh, the judging and competition may be controversial, uh, which is a different story, though it was probably as fair as it possibly humanly could have been. And the stalls and the shopping was just better than last year. In all, all in all, I'm going to write this off as a really fun event and I'll definitely be there next year with the full ensemble of my gear and the club. If you have surprisingly lasted this long in the video, stay tuned for part 2 where I cover the mecha category, our club table, and how I personally went in the competition. Promises though, it will be a lot shorter and more interesting video. Thank you for watching, and until next time.